What's up guys, this is Hatai7 and RCT bringing you another one for you guys. Now I'm doing this one a little quick and dirty because I'm in the middle of uh, bringing you guys uh, some information and some footage and stuff on what I'm going to be working on later after the emulation series is done, which is basically uh, something along the lines of PS3 hacking. Now I come across uh, this thing which I'm gonna cover today, which is something that I kind of missed out. Uh, I knew about for quite some time back in the day, but I kind of like left it as something that was not gonna really take off in my opinion, but man, was I wrong. Um, going through the stuff, even though I did already do a uh, Dreamcast, uh, Dreamcast console already in the emulation series, which I covered with Demu, I have to make a bonus round sort or a honorable mention at least of this emulator right here, Redream. This is freaking amazing. I'm not going to talk too much about it because everything that you need to know is out there in terms of you go directly to the site, which I'm going to link in the video description below. But man, it, <laughs> I was I was really floored by this. I thought that this was not it was kind of sort of like a gimmick or something like uh, like that. Because let's be honest, it's the internet, right? And you figure, you know, especially if you're already used to doing stuff with emulation, and you see yourself, you know, downloading just one file, you're gonna be like, oh man, this is an exe file. It's a, a lone file. What's gonna happen? I mean, you know. The sky's the limit, right? But man, am I so happy to be wrong about this. This emulator is freaking amazing. And I'm not gonna, you know, just simply talk about it. Let's go right into the screen so I can start showing you guys. Okay, here we go, guys. Well, uh, not much that I can say or I can add to the fact that I kind of miss this one or missed the boat for this one when I did the uh, Dreamcast MU episode but hey you know we're here and the important thing is that at least I caught I caught it or I caught up to it because it has been going on for quite some time here in the Redream page you're gonna notice first thing up that you're gonna see that's very very different is the fact that this one has a premium option meaning that of course um, everything about the emulator is free with this version right here however you have the option of kind of uh, the way I see it with this one in particular uh, this piece of software because I've seen so many softwares offer a premium uh, upgrade and you know it's basically a paywall and you guys know what a paywall is so I don't have to go into detail but this is this doesn't feel as much as a paywall as it is as a cry for you know help you know this these things they, they they cost to sustain to maintain and stuff and they're not doing anything you know to keep you from needed features with this um premium upgrade you know basically what you get for this is the option to run at higher resolutions from HD up. It gives you the option inside of the emulator itself. You know, I'm gonna try and do a quick uh, test with that, with the key. I don't know if it, if it since I already have my key, if it works or not, but I'm gonna give it a try. The point here is that a lot of people that don't like, or they stay away from this because of the premium upgrade. I'm here to tell you that it does not affect the quality of this emulator. This emulator is amazing. Now, the only thing that worries me right now in 2019 is the fact that the last update done to this was back in 2018. Um, 
I search around to see if there's any more recent updates and that doesn't seem to be the case so I'm, I'm hoping for the newer uh, customers out there that you know want to look into this I hope this is not something that'll you know be detrimental to you deciding if you want to go for the license or not now that out of the way um, one more thing to point out is that this does not do well, at least in my knowledge or to my knowledge, this does not do a Thomas Wave or any other arcade like Naomi and stuff like that, which Demu does. So this does not take the top spot for me as the best emulator. At least it becomes one of the best when it comes to Dreamcast because this is what this emulator focuses on. And I have to say from what I've seen so far, this does a better job than Demu at doing Dreamcast. Now, uh, you can quote me on that because I've been doing a lot of testing and believe me, it's it's really that good. Now, aside from that, you have the compatibility here, which you can check and see which are the games that work, which are the ones that definitely don't work, no matter how hard you try. Um, the games, it seems the games that use the Windows CE are not working at this moment. I don't know if that's something that's going to be fixed. I hope so. But yeah, you have a quick start here and it's just so damn easy. This is one, if not the only emulator that does not require you to use the BIOS or get yourself a BIOS. It is a good idea to have one because of course you know booting into the os is uh is very good and it helps with compatibility with certain titles and stuff but they have made a reverse engineering of the original bios so you know out of the box it really does not need a bios but you can have one as i'm going to show you guys i have around here let me open real quick uh oh my god where did i keep okay I think I have it here. Uh, nope, it's not here. Okay, here we go. So, first off, let's take the redream key and put it. No, I need to cut it. Cut and paste. Okay. Now, I have a whole slew of different biases because I love I like to test and see what works and what doesn't. So I'm gonna take this one out and just drop a regular these are the old models. So let's do uh, this one. And I've made copies of them. Now, for BIOSes to work here, you need to uh, rename them into boot bin. Now that's there, so when I run the emulator, it's gonna be able to uh, basically run, have the option to run the BIOS and stuff. So see, this is basically what you get when you get the basic version. You have an amazing uh, user interface. You can, of course, the first thing you need to set up is the library. Now, the amazing thing that this does is, of course, it downloads the covers. It has a nice little, there's some of them, of course, some... Uh, copies or whatever that they don't have then because of the naming convention I guess you cannot get uh, the cover for it but you can if you look into and you're like me that like to tweak and stuff you have uh, there's workarounds because I changed the cover of a title that was wrongly uh, named for some reason I think it was oh my god what was it forgot the game but I had to change the cover because it was a completely wrong 
So uh, luckily I have my hyperspin files, the media files, and I was able to change. I think it was with Daytona. Yeah, this is the only one that is not here. Yeah, Daytona. This one was named something else, and I just did a, a, a quick edit with the media files and hyperspin and just put the, the cover of the game there. So yeah, there are workarounds to the cover stuff. This is uh, all uh, saved to the cache files or the cache folder. This is where all the basically all the covers are going to be at. So once you open it, because all you have basically when you download this um, emulator is the Redream um, EXE. That's basically it. Once you open it, then it starts popping up a whole bunch of files that you're going to need, but this is completely portable. You can move it, move the folder to anywhere you want. Um, of course, you need to change then the path of where the games are going to be at, but it's completely portable. You don't need to uninstall. There's no registry bullshit to deal with, so you know it's really, really cool. And of course, you can go into full screen. The full screen works like a charm controllers um, right now I'm using I was using the mouse right now but now I went to the Xbox one controller and you know it just works you just need to basically don't bother with games that are not working in the compatibility to this because I've had a, a little bit of issues configuring my folders because I had to divide this has a convention of sorting out the games into I made a modification to the configure uh, file because the configure file comes standard with uh, 32 games at a time if you pass over 32 games it's not gonna read it it's gonna crash so I in my case had to basically divide it into three folders and make sure that it wouldn't go over 32 games. Now, there's something that is not mentioned anywhere in the in the site. I had to figure this one out on myself. But yeah, there you go. So if you're gonna set it up and you have tons of games, I recommend you divide them into folders and just add them one by one. Be sure to check the compatibility list so you don't throw in uh, any games that might break. Um, the actual emulation because it's gonna be a bitch. You need to take configure files and stuff like that out and and rework them. The point is for the vast majority out there who's not a freak like me and is gonna set this up. It's straight up plug and play, dudes. I mean, this in terms of usability, this is freaking amazing. You just go from um, telling the the emulator where your files are then telling them what controller to look for and if you want to configure you just right now it, it automatically it picked up that I had an Xbox one controller you can customize everything but it's already done for you so you don't need to worry about that either so yeah it's just easy you want to go from window to full screen just press that option that's it the window size the size of the window of course Aspect ratio, I keep it in 4.3 because that's the way Dreamcast games are. Now, this right here, this is the layers, of course. There are different types of rendering. I This is the one more, um, let's say, more authentic to the Dreamcast, which is 64 layers. So, the compatibility is going to be really, really good if you leave it here. And since this is not like Demio in the sense that this does not require such a lot of resources, I mean, I've been testing and it really does not demand that much, then you're good. You're good to go. This is basically up to here. This is basically everything that you get, including booting to BIOS. Remember that, that BIOS file that I, th I threw in? Well, basically, when you do that, you go into here and that way you can configure your VMUs which are automatically done as soon as you boot into BIOS so they give you right off the bat four memory cards for you to or VMUs for you to um, mess around with so um, let me see what else that's basically it now the difference here becomes apparent once you 
get the key as you see there's only there's only four options here right so basically when you get the key which I stupidly left over here and you download the key which costs five bucks by the way just so you know basically what you get now when you restart it and go to video now you have the option open to raise the internal resolution that way you can run stuff in 4k if you need to I have to say this which is the basic let's say um, equivalence to 1080p works just beautifully I mean you don't need something higher than this however um, it is kind of nice if you want to see certain games that are a little, you know, normally a little blurry. This will straighten it out really, really well. So that's about it in terms of what you need to know about the emulator itself. Um, there's a nice little added feature here. You can change also the type of cable, you know, from composite. I don't know why anybody would want to run it in composite but you know the option is there if you want it now before you know, I'm gonna take this original uh, bios here and just get it out of the way and pick up one of the custom boot ROMs this one has a nice little version here which has a, a very cool animation in the beginning a little different just to spice things up and what it does is once you do that and you go to boot well actually not from boot to bios but when you go to a game and you start up a game it'll go into a nice little animation new animation in case you don't want the same original you know uh, Sega Dreamcast logo it has a nice animated one to replace it so okay I've talked a whole lot about the emulator let's see how it runs right let me put the mouse aside here and take up the controller let's do Hydro Thunder there goes the animation I was talking about it's a little different I mean I love the original one but that one looks really nice Now, the only thing that I notice, I mean, <clears throat> the emulation is, is like freaking spot on. Only more beautiful, of course, with the uh, added resolution. And in 4.3, it's just, it just works. I mean, it, it just works. Let's go into a quick race here. Choose your track. What I do tend to notice here, Thunder however, Park. is that it kind of favors the sound effects over the music the music tends Choose to be a little bit boat. more muffled Midway. so that's something that probably you have to um, kind of tweak game by game Three, two, one. Go, go, go. but just take a look at this guys I mean the boat on that one. Har, har, har. Alright. Time to get down. But 
everything looks nice and clean. And of course you can set up a go back to menu to whatever button you want. Given that I've been for a long time on here, I want to just show off a few of the classics to show you guys how well they run. Now, one that usually is a, a pain in the ass to run in certain emulators. Uh, Daytona, it works like a charm here. Again, I'm gonna run through these as quick as possible. Because I took a little bit more time than I really wanted to explaining the emulator. But of course, just like the other uh, emulator videos that I've done so far, I'll probably do an extras videos just, just so you guys can see the difference. So let's load this. I already had something saved there. Let's go into a quick single race just to show you guys. Check it out. It looks just beautiful. No slow down bullshit. You might get a little stutter here and there occasionally, but not something that's gonna be game breaking. You're gonna be feeling basically like you're playing uh, HD Dreamcast. No worries about cables and all that crap. You have all of your games in one place. And to be completely honest, if that's not bad for five bucks, I mean, considering that you need the 4K stuff. And here we go. Everything is snappy. You want to get out of the game, you get out of the game real quick. Uh, it's, I mean, it, it can't be easier than this. The only thing, the only sour spot in this whole thing is that, of course, Sega Rally, like a few, just a few titles that just don't work yet. They're completely broken. Don't bother with them. I'll just keep them here because they do run with other emulators. But yeah, that's kind of like that. The only downside to this is that. Uh, what else? It runs some of the indie titles. Uh, some of them they don't, but you know that's just a bonus. Uh, let me see which one. Let me check. Turn on arcade, which is. Just to show you guys that it runs, because I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. He's. if that one was running apparently not let me see if this one nope well I'll probably need another maybe another bias file I can try this out because I I'm not sure if this one is among the list of not working at this point. I didn't check. I'm sorry about that, guys. But the ones that do work, like Project Justice, Project 
Forest is a Ekron or Ekron backup. And I know when you see this, you must be wondering, hmm, if this one runs well, how about Marvel vs. Capcom 2? Well, I'll get, I'll get to that in a second. because I just want to show how this works. Just check out the detail on the characters. It's a huge upgrade. Messed up now, boy. So, as you can see, Project Justice is a okay. Look at the detail, everything really up to HD standards of course and you can go higher you can go all the way to 4k if you want there's one of those cases that you really don't need it but in the year you might be asking yourself but what do I want HD and what do I want 4k for you know I mean I understand the 3d ones but how about the 2d ones well Marvel, Marvel vs Capcom is one of those and you're gonna see why just pay attention, close attention to the backgrounds, and you're going to understand why. This one, I already had a file. I'm going to let the intro run. Because, you know, this one in particular is one that's a little iffy. And some of the other emulators. Now, look how clean and how nice it's running here. And above everything else, pay attention to the frame rate. Everything is working where it's supposed to. This is where I have stuff saved now one downside that I wasn't expecting is that it does not have a save state load state feature but given how everything is so on point with the console I don't I don't mind it I don't miss it at all I mean the VMUs are working perfect so you get to save your game and you get to play your games the way that you played on the Dreamcast so that's that's kind of more than enough for me especially given how good they look again you're gonna get run-of-the-mill stuff when it comes to the 2d part but you're gonna see when we go into the you see the backgrounds wait till you see the backgrounds at the backgrounds and the gameplay is just freaking seamless 
No stuttering bullshit. No freeze in the middle of a combo and none of that crap. As you can see, everything looks pristine in the background. Really nice and clear. None of that pixelated stuff. And everything works. Can't ask for more. Now, how about something like Shenmue? Again, I know I'm not saying a lot uh, with the games. But this is just to show off how different types of games work. They just work. You know, you don't have to worry about much. Do I have anything to continue from? No. Again, not gonna go through all the stuff, but just to give you an idea of how everything looks. No missing graphics, none of that stuff. Everything super clean. See guys, everything is working the way it should. Now of course, some other titles that uh, should be made mention here. I'm not going into the fighters because you saw Marvel. Just the way those work. Let me let me do something a little bit more polygonal when it comes to Capcom, like Power Stone. This is another one that in Demio, I think. Actually, the video that I did last time covering Demu, I was running one of the Power Stone ones, and it did kind of like stutter a lot. Not the case here, guys. Demu tends to use a lot more resources than this one. Now, the reason for that seems to be, well, you know, the fact that many of these emulators have been... Uh, the priority has been to move them to platforms like Android and iOS and of course given that those are more smaller platforms to work on in terms of hardware you know power when you get them to run smoothly there it tends to kind of like scale really nicely on PC welcome to the power stone world look at that just absolutely freaking beautiful. Fight for your freedom. Escape from the castle. No weird glitches, none of that stuff. A solid beginning may lead to a perfect ending. Go for it. An aquatic adventure. Don't forget to take advantage of those sounds. <laughs> Oh, 
want to get the sword, damn it. Get out of there. Everything is working fine, no slowdown, no nothing, no missing graphics. So, of course, as the last one out of the list that I have here going on, I might add some more as they start um, becoming playable. Thankfully, most of the stuff that I have here is, uh, is playable. So, that's kind of convenient for me. I um, think it would be just fair to make the last one in this video be Sonic. And with this, I think uh, I'll end this video for now. And then later on, I'll give you guys or make for you guys some nice little extras videos where I'll be running more titles and show them off how they run in HD. Select a memory card. Select a file. Select a character. Let's get him! I remember back in the day that emulators were brought to their knees just trying to emulate this part right here and now we get it running with this one not only running the way it's meant to in the original frame rate but also in HD oh yeah this is happening Alright, here we go.
I'll play you some other time. So there you have it, guys. And that is basically our nice little emulator here. I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping that we see more optimizations done to this emulator because I, I see it has potential to add a lot more features. But hey, you know, it all depends on the team working on, the, on these things and their interests. And it might be that um, from one point on, uh, for some at one point, you know, in 2018, they decided that they needed to move to something else. But as it is, I believe that what we have here um, is absolutely amazing, considering that it's free. And the fact that you get that nice little bonus for only five bucks, I think is, is, pretty, is pretty fair. So please, if you are a Dreamcast fan and you having a, a, a PC, I'm not even going to say a nice PC, but if you have a PC and you want to have your games played in the way they deserve to be played, I think you should give this stuff here a look, go to Redream and check it out, it's going to be Hot Diet 7 signing off, check you guys later.